Hello everyone, my name is Brugly, and welcome back to the Brugly channel. This video is very, very highly requested because it is the third installment of the top 10 most terrifying Backrooms levels, which is the series where I compile easily the most terrifying, scary, gut-wrenching levels I can possibly find into one big long video for you all. Everyone loved parts one and two, and you've been asking for the third part, we'll wait no longer because here it is. Hopefully you enjoy it, thank you for watching. And let's get into it, shall we? Level Run For Your Life is classified as Class 5, so it's unsafe and unsecure, and it is infested with entities. And I mean infested. The physical layout of the level is a huge part in why it's so creepy, but it's not the only reason, trust me. This level looks like a hospital hallway without any normal lights on. Instead, there are these flashing red lights and a constant alarm sound that's blasting throughout the whole level. That would drive me insane, but I think that would be the least of my worries. There are a ton of doors on this level, one every three meters to be exact, and every 10 meters, there are these huge, big, glowing exit signs that are flashing. The entire length of the hallway is around 20 kilometers or 12 and a half miles long. Not too bad, right? Wrong. The second you spawn in this level, you'll see a horde of hostile entities right behind you, running at you full speed, and everyone spawns exactly halfway in the middle of this level. So the level's 12 miles long, you'll spawn 6 miles in, and in order to live, you have to outrun that army of creatures for six miles to the end of the level. You'll have to run at full speed without stopping, all while avoiding things in your way, like hospital beds and chairs, and sometimes even clumps are just there, so that's nice. The good news is, I guess, that every so often there are energy bars scattered on the tables in the hallways, and you can eat these in order to maintain stamina, but you have to eat them on the run since well, you're being chased by a horde of hounds, facelings, and skin stealers. So, if you do run the six miles to the end, you'll see a door labeled exit at the very end of the hallway. Once you go through that door, you'll be sent to a different level, specifically a more peaceful one, and the back rooms will never ever send you back to this level again. So, I guess that's kind of nice. If the entities do catch you, you'll meet a terrible slow demise, a fate far worse than actually dying according to the wiki. Nice! There is actually a colony here called the Creature Befrienders, and they've got 23 members, and their leader is named Derek, and they joined this army of creatures and befriended them, and supposedly they're nice with wanderers and they give them food and supplies, except it's most definitely a trap. Could they have made it any more obvious? So it sounds like the best thing is to just not approach them at all. Entering this level can happen randomly to random people, which would actually be terrifying to just randomly end up here. But there are other entrances as well in case you want to voluntarily come here. You can noclip under a table with an exclamation mark on it on level 521, and that'll put you here. And if you touch a Christmas decoration on level 655, you'll be sent here. To exit, well, I've already described it. You gotta run 6 miles or 10 kilometers to the exit door. But there are some other exits as well, even though these are hypothetical and only work sometimes. I repeat, they only work sometimes. You can sometimes no clip through a random door, and that'll put you on level 832. Or you can no clip through an exit sign but these exits don't always work and they're very dangerous, so just run the six miles and get it over with. Next for today's video is level negative eight. This level is classified as class undetermined and is another abandoned mineshaft level and is pretty similar to level negative six in how it's laid out, except this one is dark at the start and gets darker as you go. Level negative 6 was light at the start and got darker as you went, so it wasn't dark the whole time. On this level, every 100 meters you go into the mine, there are splits in the path that go into 3 to 6 different directions. And each of these directions has a number assigned to it from 0 to 9. The number is randomized, so there's no real order, but I'll explain the significance of those numbers in a second. The pathway in the mines is always wet, and there are random puddles too. Some of the puddles are actually really deep and can be up to 50 meters deep, which is 164 feet for us Americans. There are pipes that run along the bottom corners of the mine shaft, and some of them are actually broken, which causes them to leak the water that runs through them and flood the level even more. However, sometimes those pipes will randomly rumble, and if this happens, it means that there's a huge flood coming. Now these floods will take up almost the entire diameter and fill the entire mine shaft like a huge rush of running water. So if you see the pipes rumbling, run the other way or you're not going to make it. 
and you'll only see these pipes if you're on the right track to find something that you can use, like a room or a hidden item or even the exit, so that's handy. Those numbers from 0 to 9 that each path is labeled are actually really important, and there's been a key made from those numbers for the safest route to get through the level. The key is 93925478041620538. So those are the paths that you have to take to get out safely. Like I said, those numbers are randomized, but the number themselves are on wooden signs by the paths. Look for that number sequence on each path. So the first path you'll take will be 9, then 3, then 9, and so on and so forth. There are other paths with keys as well, which could be more dangerous or lead to a different entity, so don't get confused. You have to follow that exact code. The items that are on this level range from crowbars to memory jars, so there's a pretty good chance that you'll run across something good, although I'm not sure how useful a crowbar is. There was also an entity sighting here where four explorers claimed that they saw two huge red eyes staring at them from deep down a pathway and that the figure has a shadowy body with really long arms and it can run at extremely high speeds around the level. It's also said that this entity wants explorers to suffer pain and not completely unalive. Nice. There are also other entities like Smilers, Death Moths, Hounds, and Facelings. You know, the typical ones. But they're not that common, but look out for them. You can enter level negative 8 by going deep into those woods of level negative 7 and finding a mine shaft. And you can exit the level by following that path key that I said earlier to get to level negative 9, which apparently doesn't exist yet. Or you can jump into a puddle to be sent to positive level 7. Whichever you prefer. So yeah, another mine shaft level. This one's creepier than level negative 6 though, I gotta say. Level 666 is classified as class undetermined because of mysterious properties, unknown information, and you'll see why later. The level was discovered in 2016 by a lone wanderer who took a picture of a weird sign in the back rooms and then they went missing. This level is described by its entrance sign, which simply reads, Welcome to hell. Don't demonetize me, YouTube. This is just how it is. No matter who enters it, the whole experience is terrible for them and most people don't even make it out. This level is really weird in that everyone sees a different version of it. These versions are called manifestations, so my manifestation of the level would be different than yours. Since the level is different for everyone, you can't describe it like normal. It's also impossible for two people to exist inside of the same manifestation, and people can't cross into each other's manifestations at all. Nice. The only thing that everyone's manifestation has in common is a sign in some way that says welcome to hell. And this sign says that same phrase in every language, and if the wanderer is blind, then the sign will be read out loud by an unknown voice. Now those words are often written on neon signs, graffiti, or on welcome mats. Whichever one fits the person's manifestation. Every manifestation shows your biggest fear, your vulnerabilities, your insecurities, and they constantly berate you with insults and scary stuff like that. So it's pretty much psychological torment, like your own personal purgatory, I guess you could say. Now I'm gonna get into the manifestation classifications. These classifications exist because all of the manifestations are so different, and this is kind of like a rough guide to classifying them. The categories are destruction, entities, audio, lighting, and sanity, or DEALS, D-E-A-L-S, if you make it into an acronym. First up is destruction, which describes the physical and environmental dangers of a person's manifestation. Now inside of this classification, there are subcategories that go from D0 to through D3. As the numbers go up, the threat level of the environmental destruction goes up as well. So D0 is no environmental destruction and D3 is destruction. Next up is the entities portion, and this classification describes how many entities there are in a manifestation and how frequently they appear. These subclassifications start at E0 and go to E4, E0 being no entities and E4 being entity infestation. Pretty self-explanatory. Now the rest of the classifications, audio, lighting, and sanity, operate the exact same way as the two I just talked about, and each of the classifications go from 0 to 4, 0 obviously being the lowest, and 4 being obviously the most dangerous. This classification system can help people describe their encounters with level 666 so that there can at least be some kind of record keeping, and not just a bunch of random mumble jumble. Speaking of manifestations, now I'm going to read you three 
three that are listed on the website so you can kind of get a sense of how they're reported. Manifestation one, background. The wanderer in this manifestation was deathly afraid of spiders and the dark. Deals rating. D1, E4, A1, L0, S0. Entry point. Level 8. The Wanderer reportedly touched a spider before suddenly being transported into level 666. Signage. A large spider web with the words Welcome to Hell weaved onto it was sighted upon entry. Description. This manifestation is near identical to level 8, with the key difference being that the spiders lived in a highly eusocial structure. Cashew water dripped from the stalactites instead of almond water. The wanderer fell through the floor and ended up at level 9, before eventually making it to level 11, and living to tell the tale. Manifestation 2 Background the wanderer in this manifestation had a close family member die in a car accident before entering the back rooms, and this left an impression on them, obviously. Deals rating D2, E1, A3, L2, S1. Entry point Level 80. The wanderer entered via the universal entry point to the level. Signage The signage that was characteristic of the universal entry point was present. Description the manifestation consisted of a rough, bumpy road, but somewhat different to the road the Wanderer had just traveled. The sky was red instead of its usual blue, and the Wanderer was at the driver's seat and was talking to a Meg official who was outside of the level through the radio. The family member who died in the car accident also boarded the car in the back seat, presumed to be an entity. The car could not be stopped no matter what was done to slow it down. Outcome After approximately five minutes of driving, the piece of land where the Wanderer was driving on completely disappeared. The car fell for approximately 300 feet before colliding with the ground, unaliving the wanderer on impact. Okay. Manifestation 3 Background The wanderer in this manifestation was deeply religious and had fears of what would happen to them in the afterlife. They also prioritized freedom and was afraid of what would happen if that was taken away. Deals rating D1, E1, A1, L3, S3 Entry point The entry point used to enter this manifestation is unknown. Signage Welcome to Hell was prominently featured on what seemed to be the Gates of Heaven as a part of the gates themselves. Description: This manifestation resembled a stereotypical form of heaven, with clouds as the terrain and a bright light all around. Only two real living things existed, being the Wanderer and an unknown entity. All other humanoid figures in the seemingly crowded area were hallucinated. Outcome. After two months of inhabitation, the Wanderer was killed by the Entity via a lightning strike. Meg officials were notified to this after the Entity broadcasted the information present in this documentation of the manifestation. The Entity said that the Wanderer had sinned beyond reprieve and had to take them out of their misery. Nice. So now you get kind of a sense of how these manifestations can be. Now like I said, these are just three examples of what a manifestation could be so yours might be different or similar, it just depends on the person. There are only theoretical entrances to level 666, and there aren't any official ones. But these entrances tend to work, so we're going to call them official anyway. You can enter if you are on level 80, and if you drive off of a road called Route 66, you'll eventually reach a shack with the Welcome to Hell text on the rooftop. If you walk into that shack, you'll fall through the floor and end up here on level 666. The other entrance is on level 105, and you have to go into an altar there and recite a Bible verse in the KJV Revelations five times, and you'll be pulled to this level. To exit, you have to perform something called the Mountain King Ritual and live through it. Now, the Mountain King Ritual sounds really stupid, but I'm going to tell you what it is anyway. You have to sit down and clap 13 times and say, quote, I mock you foolish king and then hit the closest wall as hard as you can. Once you do this, you'll close your eyes and wait until you hear music. When you do hear music, open your eyes and start walking. You'll begin to notice that there's entities and creatures following you, and the music will start to get louder and louder and louder until the music is blasting in your ears and the entities are chasing after you. If you outrun the entities and you'll make it to the end, you live. And if you don't, you don't. And this will get you out of level 666. Nice. So yeah, level 666 is like someone's own personal purgatory. And to escape it, you have to do that dumb ritual I just talked about. Level Scopopphobia, or level whatever this symbol is, by Nick from the Discord. It's classified as a class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and is completely devoid of entities that we know of, but it is extremely dangerous. So the word scopopphobia is actually the fear of being stared at or stalked which leads to anxiety and feelings of being uncomfortable. And since that's the level's name, 
You can only imagine how creepy this is about to be. The level itself looks like an infinite number of small, tight, and cramped wooden rooms with skinny, steep staircases connecting them. And these staircases require you to bend over and hunch down to even walk through them because they're so short. Even if you're already short, you're probably going to have to crouch. The rooms themselves can be anything, like kitchens, bathrooms, living rooms, and even bedrooms. And everything is made out of wood kind of like the interior of a cabin. Every room only has one thing in common, besides being made out of wood, and it's that they all have grayscale paintings of nature on the walls. Living rooms typically have glass doors or windows or both on one wall, but they're actually blacked out. You can't see through them, you can't break them, and you can't open them. They're just in place of where real windows and real doors would be. Some rooms have TVs that are on, but the only thing playing is just straight up static. And a soft static buzz echoes throughout most of the rooms. There's also soft jazz playing throughout the entire level, never getting louder or quieter, so it's unknown where it sources from, but it does add a little creep factor to it. What is known though is that two people cannot meet on this level, even if they're both here at the same time. The only way to communicate with another person is through walkie-talkies, but even then, the audio is distorted and hard to hear. This is kind of like how people in the real world can talk to people in the Upside Down from Stranger Things through radios. Neat stuff. Now it's time to get into the really creepy part of this level. After you get here, you'll start to feel an eerie liminal space vibe that you get with most Backrooms levels, but this will wear off in about 5 minutes. Then after this, that soft jazz will suddenly stop, and you'll start to feel like you're being watched. And after about 15 minutes of feeling this, you'll start to hear knocking on the doors and on the windows and walls. And since you can't see outside, you'll probably be freaking out, because I know I'd be freaking out if I heard that stuff. After 45 minutes, those gray paintings from the walls will actually turn into pictures of you from this level. Like, someone took pictures of you and put them on the wall. That's what it seems like. And you'll start hearing shuffling footsteps echoing through the staircases and rooms behind you. Then eventually, those footsteps will get closer and closer, but when you turn around, you can't see anything until you look in the mirrors on the level. If you do this, in the back corner of the room that you're in, you'll see something standing and staring at you. Can't actually make out what it is, just a shadow of a humanoid with eyes, but that's all you can see, and that is terrifying. But that is not the worst part, because after this, you'll start to feel breathing on the back of your neck, right behind your ears. But whatever you do, do not turn around, because you won't be seen again if you do. If you're still alive at this point, then you should be able to escape now, and you definitely need to. Except, no one knows how to escape, but most people said that they happened to escape when they were near a TV. So just go to one of those areas. To enter this level, for whatever reason, you can find an old wooden chair with an eye carved into it, and then sit into the chair, and you'll be sitting here. But yeah, that level literally gives me the creeps. Like, just imagine being taunted and harassed by whatever this thing is, and hearing knocking and running sounds, and you can't see anything. I would be terrified. So Ashes to Ashes, or level negative 319, is classified as a class 5 difficulty, and is very, very unsafe and unsecure, and it's really dangerous because of non-entity hazards. So you don't really have to worry about creatures or stuff like that attacking you, uh, it's the level itself that's gonna attack you. The level takes place inside of a really old and broken down house that's all covered in a thick layer of dust, ash, and other kinds of trash and waste. There are three bedrooms in this house, one and a half bathrooms, and there's also a basement, an attic, a living room, and a dining room, as well as a kitchen and office, but you can't even get to the basement or attic, so that's kind of lame. The temperature inside of this disgusting house is always pretty cold. It stays around 47 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 8.3 degrees Celsius. And on top of it being cold, it also feels really damp and it smells dank and just awful, kind of like mold, as you can imagine. Now, no one knows what the outside of the house looks like because every exit is sealed with some kind of impenetrable material. And from what you'll see in a second, you don't really have time to try to exit the house, like by going at the door, so no one really cares or knows what's outside. 
When this level was found, there was a big note carved into the table in the kitchen that pretty much says who was there and why they think they won't make it out of the level alive. One of the wanderers was 13, one was 16, one was 25, and one was 31, and that 13 and 16 year old were siblings. But that note includes some really creepy details and honestly just some terrifying stuff about why this level is dangerous. I'm just going to read you the last paragraph. And it says, I do not want to be forgotten, so find a way out. This place ages you by one year every five minutes. I timed it. I've been trying to find a way out for six hours now. I watched my sister unalive about 30 minutes ago, and she since has crumbled into ash and dust. I'm not too far behind, but I'm exhausted. I understand now why my grandfather was tired all the time. I'm going to unalive here. I made my peace with that. I'm too tired to go any further. I guess I wrote this to beg you to find a way out. When you get out of here, tell the others not to come to level negative 319. If they happen to find themselves here, tell them to find an exit as soon as possible. Uh, so, yeah. Just like that note said, this level makes you age one year older every five minutes that passes when you're there. So if you stay in the level for six hours, uh, you'd be getting older really, really quickly. And this anomaly is why there's ashes all over the ground, because when you are alive, you literally disintegrate and fall into ash and add to that ash pile. So that is that that's so creepy. I'm like, wow, that is disturbing. There's also been some researchers that got stuck in this level after that first note was left, and they left some information on the walls written in blue crayons. Apparently, most people aren't alive at around age 85, according to this note, but one of these explorer's colleagues was actually earlier than that, and they aren't alive at age 60 from diabetes, which means that this level can make you have illnesses that you'd get normally while aging in real life, but you get it way faster here because it ages you so much quicker. The researcher who wrote those findings on the wall apparently developed some kind of illness themselves, and it was some kind of heart disease because of the rapid aging. And well... You can guess what happened to both of them. The weird thing is that this aging isn't just for humans because it affects entities that are here too. One wanderer went to the bathroom on this level and found an old hound in the bathroom, ran away from it, and then the hound started chasing and then just disintegrated because it was so old. And he just watched it turn right to dust. So, yeah. Now, the first person to ever make it out of this level alive and to escape and stuff was named Wanderer BB, and apparently, he was 14 years old when he got sent here, and when he left, he was 38 years old, because he was trapped in the level for two hours, which made him become 24 years older than he was when he got here. He still has no idea how he got to this level, but the good news is he does know how he escaped. The way he got out was he went to the upstairs bathroom and found the mirror there, and the mirror was covered in dust and ash, obviously, so he wiped the mirror down, cleaned the ash off, and then got no-clipped instantly to level zero. He was 24 years older, but he was alive, which is better than what everybody else could say. There's no way to tell how many wanderers have actually gotten to this level and never escaped because the entry is still unknown, like no one knows how you get here, but it is imperative and very important that the second you get sent here, you run upstairs to that mirror and you hope that it works to send you out because if it doesn't, you can age 24 years in two hours, so yeah. So this level is classified as a class variable difficulty, which means that its safety and stableness changes depending on where you go inside the level. Now, according to the fandom, this level is actually a sub-level of the original Level Run For Your Life, which I've done a video on, if you are interested in that. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a terribly scary level in and of itself, where you spawn in and you have to run instantly away from a huge horde of entities. And at first glance, the first part of this sub-level looks like the normal level. It's a long hallway that's basked in a red lighting, and this entire part is pretty similar to the main level in that there's an entity horror chasing you and your sanity is dropping. But where it changes is that every so often, there are doors on the left or right side of the hallway that can open up to different levels, but the levels that they open up to are typically dangerous levels, not safe levels, so they're dangerous. And some of them even lead back to the main part, which is level exclamation mark. So unless you want to go back to the main level and do this entire running thing again, it's not recommended to try any of these exits. 
So I'm sure you're asking yourself, you know, what does this sublevel do that sets it apart from the main level? Well, the main thing is there are extra steps and extra dangerous things that can happen to you here. There are random liquid pain puddles that you can step in, and there are some carpeted sections of the hallways that have poisonous carpet fluid inside of them. And if you lose your shoes or you walk through these areas with your bare feet or socks on, uh, that might be it for you. Because if your feet touch liquid pain or this carpet fluid, then the pain will be worse than unaliving itself. <laughs> so... That just adds on to the difficulty on top of the entity horde chasing you. There is one pretty cool thing about this level though, and is that if you run for a really, really long time, like 10 plus miles on this level, then you might find a staircase that goes up. And if you go up that staircase, you might get to the promised land, which is a thought to be exit of the back rooms itself but it's not confirmed if it is some people are really thinking that it is and i've done a video explaining all of that so go check that out if you haven't but if you find this staircase i would recommend 10 out of 10 go into that staircase just to find the exit I, it's worth it to me to try it as you know the main level exclamation mark isn't too long only a few miles but this sub level is way longer and more confusing to run through the good news is is that there's these anomalous blue hallways scattered randomly throughout the level that can be randomly accessed to people now these don't appear to everybody and it's really unknown why they even exist but they're pretty safe and they're a good spot to take a break from running for a second and like I said these hallways are blue and that's how you'll know that you ran into a safe spot so a basic outline you can use is that a blue hall has a chance to appear every four and a half miles of running and these blue hallways are also exits of the level because there's staircases in those that go down. And if you walk to the bottom of those staircases, then you'll be sent to a random level. There are also entities here that are unlike any entities in the back rooms. So that massive entity horde behind you that's going to be chasing you is full of the regular entities like death moths and smilers and hounds and that kind of stuff. But there are also extra entities in this sub level. And what they do is that their only goal is to cause your sanity to drop. Like that is their entire reason for existing is to make your sanity less. So they're in that giant horde of entities and you can't really get a good look at them because they're just blended in with the entire thing, but you can definitely feel the effects of losing your mind. And if you somehow get sent to this level after the previous run for your life level, then you'll be extra susceptible and more likely to go insane from these entities. But if you couple that liquid pain puddle stuff and the poisonous carpet juice along with this entity horde full of creatures that make your sanity go down, uh, that makes this level even more terrifying than the main level. It's also longer, so you have to run for further. To enter this sublevel, well, there's a 50% chance that you can get stuck here from being in level 2, or you can get here by choosing an unlocked door in the hallway of level exclamation mark, which would absolutely suck because imagine you're already running for your life and you find a door that can open finally, only for it to lead you to a longer red hallway in this level where you also have to run for your life. That'd be terrible. And you can exit the level from one of those blue hallways I talked about, or you can chance opening one of the doors to run past, but as I said earlier, you never know where that's going to lead you. It might be dangerous or it might lead you back to level exclamation mark. You can also run to the quote unquote end of the level to find that staircase that goes upwards to be taken to the promised land. But that would require running for miles and miles and honestly, I, I don't think I could do that. So I would just try a door or try to find a blue hallway. I thought this level was pretty cool and it, I thought it blended pretty well with the famous level exclamation mark. It's just like it but it's more dangerous and it's longer and I like how there are a couple of exits that actually lead back to the main level because you don't really find that oftentimes with sub levels that are written in the back room so I like how that stays that way. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Level 4000 aka the final frontier is extremely unsecure and unsafe for the most part, except in one part, which I'll talk about later. And the level is split up into two distinct sections, which I'll be explaining in depth, of course. But the two sections are called Thalassophobia and the Nearshore Area. The Thalassophobia area is unsafe and unsecure and has undocumented entities around as well as a extremely dangerous documented one. But this part of the level induces a deep sense of Thalassophobia to you the second you're in it. Even if you don't have that to begin with, it still gives it to you. 
which is just terrifying, man. Also, if you don't know what it is, thalassophobia is the fear of underneath of water, the things underneath of it. This area has another weird effect on you where it drains your sanity constantly and you can't even help it. It just happens. This section also has extremely deep, dark water, and the sky is always gray, with no sun, and the water is always rough and choppy. The only confirmed entity here is called the Death Whale, which pretty much sounds exactly like the name suggests, and is exactly like the name suggests, but I'll explain it in detail in the entity section of the video, so be patient. But yeah, that's it for the Thalassophobia section of the level. It's dangerous, it's deep. It's a dark ocean. What else is there to say? The next section is called the Near Shore Area, and this area is actually pretty safe and moderately secure, which is way better than the Death Whale Infested Water. Since its name is literally Near Shore, I'm sure you can guess that this section is near a shoreline, quote unquote, but don't get your hopes up because there is no actual shoreline. It's just an infinite section of an area that looks like it's going to be a shoreline, but you can never get close to it. Kind of sucks. Apparently two Meg members traveled 26 miles towards the shore that they thought was a shore, and they didn't get any closer. This area has these black rock island formation things that stick out of the water, and there's lots of other sea life here as well, like birds and lizards and that kind of stuff, as well as seagulls and mackerels and other fish and... You know, just the typical ocean stuff. And a really creepy entity also lives here called La Camiloa, which I'm going to talk about in depth in the entity section, so you'll see it there. Every four hours in this area, a random mist will start to roll over the water. And off in the distance, you'll see a lighthouse light and the tower very faintly. But it's impossible to get to this lighthouse because it seems to change directions. And after about five hours of this mist in this lighthouse, it'll all disappear and it'll all be gone. And that was the last part of the le- Wait, there's a secret part? What? The secret part of level 4000 is called the Silver Waters and is safe, secure, with no entities. This section of the level has only been seen by two people ever and the entrance to it is unconfirmed and obviously unsafe. The water in this section of the level is kind of metallic. It has this weird thick texture to it. And it's also been tested and is actually made of a very similar compound to liquid silver. So like melted silver, but an ocean. Interesting, very interesting. So for the long-awaited entity section, there are two main ones that I want to talk about, and those are the Death Whales and then the La Camiloa. We'll get into the Death Whales first. These things look like normal humpback whales, which if you didn't know, are already one of the largest things on planet Earth, so that's terrifying. But instead of the peaceful giants from real life, Death Whales are anything but that. They are dangerous. They can detect you from miles away when you're in the water and they can swim straight up towards you and like a reverse torpedo, they will open their mouth and shoot right up at you and try to swallow you. The only chance of survival you have is to swim away just in time to dodge them. They also sometimes just come out of the water and just sit there with their mouth open for a little bit, almost like they're drinking oxygen, I don't know. It's different from real life whales because obviously real life whales have air through a blowhole, so maybe these things don't have a blowhole and they just breathe through their mouth. So far, there's been a total of 56 victims of these death whales, and the number will probably keep going up as more and more people go to this level. The next entity is the La Camiloa entity, which is just terrifying to look at. I mean, just look. This creature is very mysterious and is rarely seen, but it's really unknown how it's supposed to act because Sometimes it's aggressive, but most of the time it's not. It looks like a large humanoid that's made out of stone, and it's supposed to be around 100 feet tall, but that's just how tall it is when it stands out of the water. Like, imagine how tall it actually is with its feet touching the bottom of the ocean. It's gotta be like 20 miles tall. The creature has only actually unalived two humans total by accidentally dragging them down underwater, 
but apparently it's kind of friendly to humans and doesn't actually seek out to attack them like someone else we know. But yeah, a four mile tall stone humanoid creature is still terrifying. There are actually two colonies on this level. Those are the Ocean Explorers and the Noki Noki. The Ocean Explorers, well, they're Ocean Explorers, and they're the only official group stationed here. They live on a huge inflatable raft on the water, and they guide wanderers to the exit of the level. Kind of wholesome. And they also like to swim, which is also wholesome. Now, the Noki Noki tribe is a tribe of 50 people who live on one of those rock outcropping island things, and they seem to be like a hunter gatherer society that just hunts animals in the near shore area. They're moderately hostile to outsiders, but can be bargained with if you don't get really aggressive. To enter this level, the only reliable way is to no clip through a wet spot in the carpet in level 0. The rest of them are unreliable and are kind of finicky. Now to exit this level, you can find a specific circle of rock formations and then just wait on top of them to be teleported to the hub, or in extremely rare occasions, you can see the shore that I was talking about earlier, but the shore has a city on it when you see it, and then you can swim towards it, and then you'll be in level 1976. But that's extremely rare. The other two exits almost never happen or never work, so don't even try. Level Redacted is a level that looks like an infinite maze of yellow walls and doorways. It's only accessible through quantum fluctuations in the void, so that means you can only enter it if you no-clip through the idea of reality itself. The level itself is cataloged as one of the scariest levels in the backrooms because of its maze-like layout and the isolation that it puts you through. Oh, and the fact that there's no known escape. So. And people who come here are seemingly doomed to wander the halls forever. But if it makes you feel any better, there are no entities here, so. The main part of the level is the infinite yellow walls and doorways part, but there are a ton of sublevels as well. You can enter sublevel 1 if you wander around the main level for 5 days. Then you'll come across a staircase that seems out of place inside of the yellow wall, and these stairs will lead directly to sublevel 1, which physically is an exact copy of the main level, but it's just gray, so that kind of sucks. This sublevel does have more decoration on the walls, so I guess that's nice, but most importantly, it has mirrors on the wall. These mirrors are how you travel to the next sublevel. And the next sublevel itself is a brown copy of the first level, so that's kind of boring, but that's what it is. The next sublevel after that is the easiest one to get through, and there are actually functioning lights on this level so you can travel around and rest a little bit easier. Although it is unknown how to actually leave this level because it seems to be just random, people just disappear from it. Sublevel 4 looks like a factory with industrial stuff everywhere. There's even a big pipe that runs through the ceiling, and if you walk through that pipe, you'll get to the next sublevel. From here, there are exactly 20 more sublevels, so there's 24 in total, and each of them are vastly different from each other, ranging from levels that are entirely glitch pools or levels that are just giant destroyed fast food restaurants. So yeah, I guess pretty insane. Now, I'm sure all of you noticed there was a random dude in the thumbnail of this video, and I'm also sure none of you recognized him, but he's actually pretty legendary in the Backrooms community. His name is Dr. Huel H. Charles, and he's a wanderer of Level Redacted that's apparently from a future timeline. Dr. Charles is actually the founder of several outposts in Level 6 and 11, and he claims he was born on August 8th, 2051. He has an insane talent for creating machines and robots, and he even got hired by the Backrooms Exploration and Discovery Group on level 11 as a mechanical and medical doctor. Nice. So it's kind of like an Indiana Jones of the Backrooms, you could say. Except when he got trapped in level redacted, he ended up creating a wormhole to the front rooms, so back to reality, using some spare parts. This guy was a genius. And he said that in his last transmission that he found a way to get back, and he hasn't been heard from since then. So who knows, maybe he may- So Backrooms Level 32 is classified as a Class 5 difficulty, and is really unsafe and really unsecure. There's also a powerful entity living in it, which we'll get into more later. So the level itself looks like a constantly dark forest that goes forever in every direction. The sky is dark with no stars and only has a single crescent moon in it, which is the only light source of the entire level. 
The forests are filled with dark trees that have skeletons hanging from the branches. That's, that's creepy. The bones act like wind chimes and they'll clatter together whenever a breeze is blowing. And some people have even claimed that they've heard the skeletons talking to them. And they say stuff like about their old lives or they tell the future and prophesy the future. No one's confirmed this, but it's just what some people say and honestly I really like that idea. Other than these skeletons, there's one entity that walks the dark forest, and she appears in two forms. The first form is called the Bell, which is a pale woman with black hair and a nice dress on. She has skeleton face paint on, and she's, you know, pretty, pretty nice. Or is she? The Bell doesn't talk, but she lures wanderers into following her, kind of like a siren does to pirates. You know, sirens would lure pirates into the water and then drown them. Well, that's what this thing does too. If a wanderer does end up following the Bell, she will lead them deeper into the woods to her other form, the Skeleton Queen. This form is a really tall, skeleton-y figure in an old black dress. The entity is really powerful and can somehow control the entire domain of the level. Like she just can control everything. If you're kind to her and you listen to what she has to say, then you might be let go. But if you aren't, then she'll tell the trees to grab you and just to rip you apart because she can control everything. Or if she really doesn't like you, she might even fake letting you go and then while you're running away, she just opens a hole in the ground right under you and you fall into it and then you get buried by the soil. That's, that's creepy, man. My advice is to not follow the bell in the first place, no matter how much you want to, unless you want to get eaten by a giant skeleton. As of right now, there isn't a known entrance to level 32, and it seems like the only way to get there is to get lost in a dark forest on some other level, but no one knows for sure. Weirdly though, some people have said that they've no-clipped from real life directly into this level, which would suck really bad considering most people actually go to level 0 first. And I feel like that one would be significantly less scary than this one. And the only way to exit the level is to see those hanging skeletons and then get lured by the bell to see the skeleton queen. The only way you can leave is to just be nice to her and your life's literally in her hands. If you're kind to her and she allows you to leave, then you'll just be cool. You'll wake up in a different forest on another backrooms level. But if you're rude to her or short with her or something, well then you're probably gonna get eaten by a tree. No lie. But if you do get sent to another forest on another level, you'll wake up and you'll remember what just happened, but to you it'll feel like it was a dream and not reality. But deep down, you will know that it wasn't a dream. There's also a little story at the end of the entry that's pretty much a girl trying to find the skeleton queen so she can bring back her unalived lover, like back to life, in exchange for her own life, and it works. So that's cool, I guess. So Backrooms level 7777, aka Bloodlust Masquerade, starts with a warning for anyone who might get shocked or goofed up with stuff like mental trauma or light descriptions of gory stuff. If that kind of stuff messes with you, then you probably shouldn't continue. But as always, I do censor everything pretty much, so you're not going to really hear anything. You're just going to hear code words for deep things. So. The level itself looks like a smallish house from the late 1990s. There's bookshelves on the wall and the floors have a brownish carpet color. But the carpet itself is covered in a red liquid that typically comes out of people sometimes, if you know what I'm saying. The walls themselves are also painted red, if you know what I'm saying. But this red stuff is all over everything. There's actually been DNA tests done on this liquid and it's been linked to the same people who have actually been on this level before. Even if they didn't get hurt, it still can match to them, which is really interesting. There are three main rooms in this house on the first floor, and those are the living room, the kitchen, and the bathrooms. All of them have this weird effect called the level 7777 effect, and I'll get into what that means in a second. So buckle up. There's actually a second floor to this house as well with two smallish bedrooms. Now this floor is the only one with windows since the first floor is completely dark. But when you look outside of the windows, it's just a glitchy distorted void. There's nothing out there. The windows also won't even open, so you just gotta look through the glass. 
and I don't even give light, really, just instead a kind of a faint glow. So it's recommended to bring a flashlight if you're going to be coming to this level, but trust me, you're probably going to want to avoid the level. When you shine your flashlight in some rooms, you can see that in the different areas, some of them have a black and white effect, meaning that everything you see will be black and white only. Like I said though, this only happens in some specific rooms, so no one knows why, but it's really weird. So now, I'm going to explain that thing I mentioned earlier called the level 777 effect. Tighten down your seatbelts, this gets insane. So now I'm going to talk about the level 7777 effect, which appears to everybody as a active cognito hazard. This could really mess you up if you don't keep your sanity with you and your bearings straight. So get ready. The second you get to this level, you'll smell rotting and decaying flesh of some sort. Now this smell is kind of wafting through the entire level and it doesn't really lead to one thing at first until you start to follow the smell you'll be led to one of the rooms that i talked about earlier and if you walk into that room suddenly you'll feel like you're standing in a pool of quote unquote red paint wink wink if you know what i'm saying or you'll feel like you're standing on a floor made out of flesh if you know what i mean now if you feel this stuff on your feet whatever you do don't look down because of what happens if you do. If you look down at whatever you're standing on, the darkness that's in this level will start to fade away and you'll be able to see in full brightness what you're standing on. And what you'll see is every friend or family member or person you know in real life will be under you. Wink wink. If this happens, then you'll start to go insane obviously because you're seeing people you love and care about just there under you unalived. Once this insanity starts, there's literally no going back, you'll just keep getting worse. You'll feel hopeless and guilty and sorrowful and sad, but the best thing you can do if you get stuck in this 7777 effect is to try to just chill in the corner of the room until the grief is passed. When this grief state is over, most people will still go insane from what they just experienced, which makes sense because obviously what you just saw when you looked down. The good news is, is that if you don't show many emotions, or if you're pretty emotionally strong, or if you're a sociopath, then the level 777 effect won't really mess you up. You'll kind of just go on like normal. But if you're really emotional and things like this mess you up in the head, then it's going to be tough. So. so that was the dangerous cognito hazard effect for this level, and that's what makes this level extremely dangerous, and you probably should avoid it at all costs. So when this level was discovered originally, it was just a class zero because everybody thought that it was a chill house that was just really dark. Soon after that though, people started discovering the level effect and some of the survivors of the effect are completely insane off the deep end, but they remember every morbid detail about what they saw and they're just extremely traumatized. There aren't any documented entities here, but there is believed to be a couple of undocumented ones, but it also might be that the entire level itself is an entity because of what it can do. So, yeah. To enter this level, for whatever reason, you can go into a house on level 9 that will link up to this level, or you can enter from the hub sometimes if you see red paint, wink wink, on the floor. There's only two exits to the level. The first one is you make it through that cognito hazard by being emotionally stable or not having emotions. And if you make it through just fine, you'll be sent to another level. And the other exit is by unaliving. So <laughs> you better start getting those emotions in check if you want to leave.